Okay, I'm ready for the next layer of, uh, so now I'm gonna be doing the mountains. Um, you'll notice that with almost all of these pictures, and uh, let me grab this one. You'll notice that things that are far away in the background are very, very light. This creates an atmospheric perspective. Things are much lighter the farther away and then as uh, objects, are, in this case the mountains or trees, as they get closer, they're darker and darker and darker. So each layer becomes uh, darker and darker. Um, and that's what gives you that um, sense of depth in the picture. You know, again, I haven't drawn out anything with a pencil. Uh, I'm just going in and just painting. It doesn't have to be exact. I've already pre-mixed my colors here for my mountains. The ones that are farthest away from me are the lightest ones. And I'm just gonna go in and just paint them in. Uh, not even, uh, don't even have to draw them in, just sort of paint them in where they are. So there's one over here. And also notice that there are uh, each mountain is kind of a different shape, you know, they're kind of these. So um, try and look at the picture and, and emulate the shapes that you see in the picture, rather than making these sort of rounded um, lumps that are sort of a symbol for a mountain. Let's look at actual shapes of mountains to, to sort of block these in, rather than um, creating symbols of things. A lot of times we'll create um, a symbol because we go, oh, this is what a mountain looks like when we create these, or this is a bird and it looks like the letter M. All right, so rather than creating these symbols and symbolism of something, we are looking at using our picture references. Okay, now these are higher up. right at the moon there. You notice that I'm bringing the color further than it really needs to be because remember each layer is gonna be darker. And so each layer as this dries will go over the next um, because it's a, a darker color. There's one area sort of poking out right there, one mountain there. And then the other one is that sort of deeper color orange. All right, so I think those are all the really light ones. You may want to let that dry and then do a second coat for the light ones to make sure that it's a really solid color. With this, because it's mountains, you really don't want them to be transparent. You want them to be solid. It was okay to keep that transparency with the sky and with the clouds because that's the sort of look that you want for sky and, and clouds is that transparency. But as we start to do mountains, we want to make sure that they are solid shapes and make sure that it's covering that little piece of the, the moon there. And again, I'm going to bring that color down. I'm just bring it down, even though I'll be covering over that, but just to make sure because again, you can add a little bit more and you can always cover over it, but it would be a real pain if I had to go back and mix it up again and try and match it. Mm. All right, I'm just gonna sort of wipe out the brush, the paper towel, or if you brought a rag, feel free to bring an old t-shirt or a rag that you want to uh, use in class. They're very helpful and it'll save paper towels. And uh, I'm going to let this dry for just a moment, and then I will do the next uh, layer of mountains. The next one's a little bit closer to us, and I've already pre-mixed the color here for the next layer of mountains that's going to come in there. And then after that, it'll be that sort of reddish-brown color um, for the next mountains that are coming closer and closer toward us. All right?